Brian, is that another coffee station intro? Now listen, I know that some of you are favorable on the coffee station intros, but there's a vocal minority of about 20% of you who will give thumbs down as soon as you see the coffee intro. But hold on for a second. Trust me, I have a point today. I usually do, but this time it's a little bit even less of a stretch. So. Uh, when you want coffee, you can choose multiple different types, right? Maybe it's a shot of espresso, something quick, quick does the trick, picks you up. Maybe it's a nice, hot, big, tall cup of, uh, I don't know, like a uh, Congo reserve, right? Or maybe you want a little pumpkin spice in there to add a little bit of flavor. The choice is up to you and it depends on what your mood is, which is exactly, thank you, like gaming, right? You might want that quick pick-me-up game to play in between others, or you might want that Twilight Imperium just, just let's chew through this and just, Delicious for hours. Well, not really because it would get cold, but you know what I mean. Uh, or you might want that kind of medium one that does something special that adds a special maybe uh, mechanic. Today, we're talking about the espresso shots. We're taking a look at two shots of espresso. I don't know if Pandasaurus would appreciate that or not. I don't care. I like calling games by coffee names. Two shots of espresso right now. And we're going to look at them. We're not going to compare them and contrast each other. I wanted to bring these both to you because they're so quick and uh, easy to play and easy to learn. And I thought we'd just do two reviews in one. This is Illusion and Silver and Gold from Pandasaurus. So we're going to take a look at both of these, how they play, etc. right now. So here's what comes in silver and gold. You get a bunch of markers for, uh, you get four player boards. These are front and back, although I don't think they need to be. You get these cards over here, which are the different treasure areas, the places you're going to try to be conquering. And uh, they all have different symbols on them. The anatomies here, they have different symbols with different types of islands here. Um, whether it be the necklace or the dagger or the gem and the uh, crown. The idea is though some of them have bonuses. So this one gives you two points at the end of the game for every uh, crown you have. So if you have crowns at the end of the game, you will get bonuses for that. Your goal is to take these cards as they come. There will be eight of them that are in the game. You will shuffle up each round and only seven of them will in fact be played each round, which is interesting because it changes the math on it a little bit. So seven of them are played. This will flip up. You will have two of these in front of you. You'll have four to choose from at the start, and then you'll choose two of them. You'll see the space, and you will mark off that shape somewhere on here. If you cannot play that shape, you can cross off a single one, or you could just put it on your other one. If it can't play anywhere, then you can mark off a single one. So we would mark off, let's say, here, 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 and here. Now, you could have done those. There are certain symbols, and basically what you're gonna just keep doing that, by the way, until all seven of these have been played. You'll do that four times. Now, that's the bulk of the game, but the, in, there are a few mechanics that change based on three different symbols that are out here. So number one is a palm tree. There's also a display of four cards here. These are the ones you will choose from when you've completed a card. You'll gain one of these. Palm trees are interesting. They're gonna score on your scorecard here. You can do it four times. Based on the one you're playing is one point, plus any that you see out here in the display. So one, two, this one's worth two. Now it could be worth up to five. You'll mark five points here if you cover a, uh, a palm tree. The next one are X's. When you mark an X, you can immediately cross off a single space somewhere else. That can chain and combo to X, X. And if you have an X on the other one, you could X it and then keep going as many times as you can. Last but not least is the coin. The coin is a bit of a chart. First person to get four coins will mark off the six on this chart and then mark it off. They'll put six here, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one, depending on whoever gets it. You will do this four rounds. You'll add up your scores for the actual charts themselves, for the maps themselves. Any bonuses for those ones that say two, plus, two points per. Uh, you'll then take your points for your palm trees, points for your gold coins, and then add up the total. Person with the most points wins the game. Now for Illusion, this game plays a lot like Timeline, but uh, not with colors, or not with cards, I should say, of history, but with cards based purely on color. And if you were to look at the back of these, you would see just a bunch of percentages, but that's not what we're gonna be dealing with. We're gonna be dealing with the front of these cards. Now shuffle up these arrows, by the way. The arrows are, in fact, what tell you what color you're looking for this round. First person to collect three of these arrows wins the game. We'll talk about how to do it. So let's just say yellow is out first. You will then take the top card and sit it here. You'll notice how much yellow is on this card. 
the next person will take the next card here and they will place it either to this side or this side depending on what they think has more yellow now obviously this one has more yellow than this one you're going to keep doing this uh, maybe here until someone says nope i think we need to check it when that happens the cards will flip over and the percentages are checked if they are correct in ascending order so this is 2 then 11 and 19 the person who played the last card gains the arrow if anywhere in the row is incorrect, the person who made the call gets the last arrow, or gets the arrow. The per first person with three arrows wins the games, but you can see that these cards get absolutely crazy, and they have different shapes, different styles of shapes. Some of them are tanagrams, some of them are hearts, some of them are squares, some of them are just these crazy lines, and then so you have things that are sharp, and then you have things that are rounded, and you have to play the odds between the two of those. But that is how you play Illusion. Uh, short explanation, but lots of lots of depth in the game there so that's silver and gold and illusion let's talk about silver and gold first okay i love a roll and write but this is more of a flip a card and write so this to me feels like number nine mixed with i don't know harvest dice or something like that um, you're quickly scratching the, and maybe tiny towns almost harvest dice and tiny towns mixed with uh whatever i just said a second ago and I like the fact, number nine, I like the fact that you aren't rolling. You're actually flipping over a card and everyone has to use that card and you have to cross it out upon your card. Now, as far as the game looks, it's a little bit, um, oh, I don't know. It, it looks a little bit more like a kind of a mathy game. You look down at it and go, oh, it's a grid, right? No, it's an island. Sure it is. No, I get it. I mean, it's treasure and all that sort of stuff. I, I get the whole idea that it's treasure and you're crossing it off, but really and truly it's, it's a grid. It's a mathy grid. And, and that's irrelevant. Like the theme, it doesn't matter. The only thing the theme matters for is the X marks the spot, which means you get to go find more treasure. I'm not sure how that plays into the theme either. My point is this, the theme is irrelevant, right? It doesn't, you're not playing this game to go, oh, I want a deep hearty pirate adventure. You're playing this to go, hey, I want a quick puzzle that's gonna puzzle my brain and lets me play with other people. Now, here's what's cool. Uh, you flip over a card and you get a shape, some sort of Tetris polyhedron, right? Or polyomino. And you look at them out, you look at your board and you mark those off. I love that. I think it's cool because you have to puzzle, wait a minute, do I want to mark it on this one or this one? If I mark it on this one, I'll get the X and can mark that little spot instead of having to waste a turn later. Or do I want to mark the, the palm tree now? And then that will give me five points. Is it worth that min max? Everything is a miniature min max when you cross out boxes. I really like that. I like how fast it plays. I like how just the different choices that are there. I like that you're always choosing between two cards to do. I like that there's an out that comes down to if you don't have anything you can play, you can play the uh, just a single one. I think this is a really solid game. And I think people are going to look at it some and, and they might go, well, it doesn't have dice. It's not a roll and write. No, no, that's the point. This is something different. It does something different than the traditional roll and write or something. It's a quick flip and write. And I think it's really good. If you like number nine, you're really going to like silver and gold because the way it flips up and you X those off, everyone's using the same cards. Uh, the systems in it are just smart and it's very fast. So I 100% recommend going to pick up silver and gold. Now, I just want to clarify down here in the final thoughts, uh, you know that Pandasaurus does sponsor Board Game Breakfast. They did not sponsor this video. I'm telling you this and not that it would matter if somebody even somebody did sponsor a video that I was doing. I'm going to tell you straight up. You saw my pendulum review, even though it wasn't sponsored. Yeah, I'm not sponsored by anybody. But my point is this. You saw I'm not going to pull any punches. So just to clear this up, I really like silver and gold as it stands on its own. It has nothing to do with where the game comes from or who makes it. Just want to point that out because I know every once in a while those comments will arise about other um, topics. But just know this game's good. It's just really, really good and it's quick. So that's silver and gold. Now let's move over on to illusion. Ooh, is this your card? Like, like maybe, maybe like, oh, I just made it. No, stop it. Illusion, right? It's what I do for a living. And, uh. It's, it's not at all about what I do for a living, actually. It's just an illusion in name, an optical illusion, not a metamorphosis or uh, Azra levitation illusion. This is all about the optical illusion of can you see the colors perceived correctly? And can your brain unfold this square out to where if it was next to those, would it be bigger and more green than those, right? I like that. I like the systems that this game employs. Uh, it's not the prettiest game in the world. It's just colors splotched out onto different cards and different shapes. And some of them are hand prints, some of them are nice squares, some of them are squigglies and circles and words. That's cool, but it's not like you don't look at this and go, oh my gosh, who designed that? It looks incredible. But that doesn't matter because the gameplay is all up here. It's all about theater of the mind, giving you this mental, um, 
push and pull tug of war every time of like, oh my gosh, is this yellow more than that one? And then that little breaking point of, I think it goes here. And then lo and behold, it ends up being the exact same percentage, which is always nice, right? So think of it like this. Think of the game timeline, except without history, with optical looking, being able to look down and see and perceive colors. Now, I like pattern recognition and just in life in general. So this game is fun for that. I would like to give a caveat. I have not tested this. I have a good friend who's who's colorblind uh, a good bit. I've not tested this with him. I don't know how this would play with people who have uh, color difficulties. I imagine not great, so you know that going in, so don't go, wow, this one's off the list. I cannot support a game that doesn't. No, no, no. It, it, just understand that it's still there. It's still a game that exists that if, if this is something you and your group can play, please play it. I don't know, and don't, don't even hear me say that and think, well, you must not be able to play it. I don't know. The colors might be certain shades and certain borders and certain variants to where you can. It doesn't really matter if you can see blue is blue. I don't know. You you let me know in the comments below about that. I'm actually very curious about the four color choices and if these are better or worse, etc. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure that'll just start a, uh, a good productive conversation about that whole thing. But like I'm saying, it's interesting to me. But all that aside, the game is really good. I really like the way you play these cards out, hoping that you were putting it uh, to, the, to the right or to the left of one that you now know. The coolest ones to me are ones that are similar in shape, but like unfolded. There'll be like a square, or a U-shaped thing where your brain goes, wait a minute, if that was folded up and folded up again, wouldn't it look kind of as a little bit more than the square that's on the other card? Those decisions are where I really enjoy it the most, when you're actually having to physically or mentally in your brain unfold and unpack shapes to become other shapes and other cards and hope you're right. And when you are right, it's not a few, there's not a lot that feels better than that. So uh, the mechanics are a little tricky though. It's, uh, we, were, we were debating about this. The person who calls, you, who calls the row and says, no, I don't think the row is correct. If they are right, they get points. They get the point, right, the card. If they're wrong, then the person who just last laid a card is wrong. Now, we were debating this the other night about, does it does that make sense? But then again, if the last person who played a card is right, it means that they're playing the technical most difficult, possibly difficult card in a row because they're adding a card down and it gets exponentially harder each time. So we kind of came down to the consensus of, okay, it does make sense to award that last person, uh, even if they only laid the third card or the fifth card or the seventh card, right? Versus you call the row wrong, and it doesn't matter if it was the first card laid by the person sitting over there, uh, but you two are sitting over here, you're calling it and it's still wrong, well then you keep the card. So it's an interesting push and pull of like, well should I call it now, or should I wait, or should I call it later? Maybe maybe it's really not wrong, and, and maybe I'll wait until there's a more obvious one. So Illusion is a really fun game. Now let me sum this review up. Both of these games are quick, and they're very fun. They're good games that involve uh, quick, logical, puzzly thinking. They're both very small, they both can fit into to a backpack and play on a on a trip somewhere, right? Uh, they're both easy to lay out and play. They're very easy to teach. They're very easy to understand with new players and new gamers. So I recommend both of these games. I'm not going to rank them against each other, but if I was going to, I would pick silver and gold. Carla would pick probably silver and gold and then illusion, but Silver Gold is just such a good little flip and uh, right game, but get both of them, honestly, because they both serve two different niches. And as we're starting to open back up and as places are starting to get back together and playing games, you know, safely and all that sort of stuff, uh, these are good for that because they don't require you to be right on top of each other anyway. So uh, Silver and Gold and Illusion, both great games. Go pick these up. Uh, I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Dice Tower Brian. Until then, we'll see you. Have a cup of coffee. On me. Not on me because I don't... I'm not gonna like PayPal or Venmo everybody, but you know, go have one and tell me about it later. See ya.